Now you can't go anywhere on YouTube or the internet without seeing at least a hundred videos or articles on AI. And today I'm going to break with tradition by not doing a video on AI. And that is a complete and utter blatant lie because I'm going to do a video on CodeWP, which is an AI based platform for working with WordPress. But stick with me because I think if you are a WordPress user, this is something you may want to take a look at and check out for yourself. Well, why would I want to use something like CodeWP over ChatGPT? That can write code for me and you would be totally right. However, the big key difference here is ChatGPT is not trained on WordPress. CodeWP is. It's trained on WordPress code. So you're going to generally or potentially get better, more relevant code out of CodeWP than you ever will out of ChatGPT, or at least in the foreseeable future. And that makes it interesting. Now, let me quickly just say, before we go any further, there are two types of plans when it comes to code WP. You've got the free plan, which is what we are going to check out today. And then you've got the pro plan, which starts at about $12 a month, unless you pay it yearly, which you get a chunk of saving. The main difference between these is we are restricted on the free plan to just working with PHP. If you have a pro plan, you open up a lot more options and I'll show you some of those options in a moment. So just bear that in mind. We are limited with what we can do in this free video. With that being said, I've already created an account. I've logged in and once you log in, you're going to get your dashboard, which is all nice and green and black, which I like that color scheme. What do you get inside here? is a kind of overview of your account, the platform, and some of the things you have access to. If we look on the left-hand side, we can generate code, and we'll go into that in a moment. But you can also see under there, it'll show you any snippets you've created, any public snippets, so you can grab anyone that other people have created and have been verified. Code tutorials, it'll show you how to use various different code features as part of this. And finally, your usage, which is probably more useful if you're on the free plan, so you can see how close you are to your limitations. Now. If we take a look at this launch code, before we jump into generating code, these are all of the options you would have available in the paid pro plan. So you could create PHP code for Elementor, SQL or SQL code for WooCommerce, for WordPress, JSON file for working with Oxygen Builder. You've got Metabox, ACF support, Regex support. You've got Oxygen, you've got Breakdown. This, this, there's a lot of options inside you. So if you want to have or generate code specific to those platforms you may be working on, you can use those features, but you do need a paid plan, I'm unfortunately. But let's go ahead and take a look at generating some code and see how this kind of works. Now, once you, you hop into the creation section, you get a little sort of overview of this is like a little welcome message to just spit some code out for you. Underneath, you've got your new prompt option. This is where we can create, like you would with ChatGPT or MidJourney or so on. This is where you'd use your prompt. And the difference between this and something like MidJourney is you don't need to start putting in all kinds of strange codes. You just put in in more sort of straightforward English language, more conversational like you'd have with ChatGPT. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Next up, you've got the generate option, which is what we currently have access to. If you have a pay plan, you can use the option to edit, which you can make changes and then compare the code side by side. And you can also get explanations. So you can hit the explain option and it will actually tell you what the various different pieces of code are actually doing in the code that it generates. So it could be useful if you were trying to use this as a learning aid. Finally, you've got the PHP option. So if we click on that, this will show us that we only have PHP, but you can see underneath are all those other options for things like Oxygen, Breakdance, Elemental, and so on. In our use case, we don't have access to those, so we can ignore them. I just wanna make you aware that they are there and they are trained specifically for those platforms. So that's pretty cool. Before we start generating a new prompt, you can see at the top, we can search, we can favorite, we can thumbs up or thumbs down the code. So we can say, this was a good code generation. We like it, we give it a thumbs up. That'll help train it. You can give it a thumbs down. And again, that will also help train it. And you can, if you want to, you can download your code in various different formats. So you can grab a JSON file, a PHP file, or if you're using uh, Oxygen Builder, you can just export this directly into that by copying and pasting the code into the Oxygen Builder platform itself. Okay, so with that being said, this is kind of where we are. Let's hit the new prompt. And now what we can do is we can type in what we wanted to create. Now, even though we don't have access to the WooCommerce centric options, we could easily ask this to create some WooCommerce code. We can even ask it to generate short codes. So the simpler the message inside you, the simpler the code that will come back, the more detailed you are, the more detailed the actual code will be. So if you have very specific kind of requirements, 
break it down to exactly what you want. And I would recommend checking out the official video from Code WP. It's about 19, 20 minutes long, but it will give you more detail than I'm going to cover in this video. I'm going to just keep this really light and breezy just to give you an idea, and then you can play with it if you want to. Okay, so let's start off with a really simple thing. Let's just say create a CPT. And the nice thing is we don't need to put custom post type in. You can if you want to, but it understands because it's trained with WordPress itself. It understands what a CPT is. So we say create a CPT called recipes and include a taxonomy for recipe type. Let's go ahead and ask it to generate the code for us. So after a few moments, we now have the code generated for this. So you can see our labels, recipe, recipes, add new recipe and so on. So all the options are there. You can see our labels. There's our custom taxonomy. So now what we need to do is go ahead. If we're just using the standard vanilla WordPress, we can copy that. We can head over to a test website. I've already gone ahead and installed the free version of code snippets. And now I can click to add a new code snippet. We'll call this custom CPT. We'll pop our code inside there. And what we can do now is we can come down. We can choose where to run this. So we'll just say run snippets everywhere. And we're going to say save changes and activate. And you see now on the left hand side, there's our recipes. We can add a new and we also got our recipe type. So it's created that for us. If we come into all recipes, you can see we currently have no recipes and we can click on add new. And this allows us to go ahead and add things in. Now, obviously there are no custom meta posts inside here. The only thing we have is this, this is actually associated with a custom taxonomy. So this is a very, very simple, basic type of setup. So what you could do is you could come back into code WP and you can say a new prompt. Nice thing is it'll keep that prompt here for us. And let's just say we're going to create a, a CPT called recipes and include the taxonomy. So we'll keep all that in there, but we're going to ask it to add a couple of extra meta fields. So we basically do the same thing. We just add in some extra custom meta fields on telling it what type of meta fields we want. And let's go ahead and generate the code and see what it comes back with. And now if we take a look at the code, you can see there's extra options underneath where we've got calories and servings. So we now have those extra fields. So let's go ahead, like we did last time, copy this code, head back over to code snippets. I've disabled the previous custom post type, so we'll add a new one in, call this recipes. We'll pop that code inside there. Same again, so we'll say save and activate. There's recipes. If we add a new recipe, you can see there's our recipe details. And we can't put text in there. We can only put numbers in. Simple as that. So we've now generated custom code that's generated this for us. We haven't had to install additional plugins other than code snippets, and you don't need to do that. You could very easily just use a child theme, drop this into the functions PHP file if you want to do that way. But a plugin like code snippets just means that it's just safer. And if anything goes wrong, you can just disable it. It's much easier. And that's basically a really simple example. And you could really start to flesh this out and get really complex with exactly what you want and relationships you want to create, those kinds of things. Now, there's a lot more to this service than just that. But what I would say at this point in time is you do need to have at least a basic understanding of exactly what's going on to be able to use this effectively. If you just start asking it to create code and you don't understand the code to check it, you could be asking for a whole world of pain. So bear that in mind. It does make sense to have just a little understanding of exactly what's being asked of it and just to check that code. Now, one of the cool things about this is if you have a paid plan, you can ask it if you see any kind of vulnerability to secure or change the content to secure whatever's going on in there, any vulnerabilities that you actually see. You don't get access to those kind of comparison tools. This is where you have the options inside you for the edit option. And this will kind of show you side by side that with any changes have been done. But you can kind of ask the prompt to do some of these things for you. But like I said, you do need to have a basic understanding. Now, this is just a really, really simple example of what you can kind of do. If you click on the name of this, you can jump back out and you can go back to your dashboard. This will show you the actual code itself. You can copy it. If you've made changes, you can see the original and you can see the modified version. You get some options over on the right hand side to say you can share this, you can export it, edit, explain. Again, depending on what kind of account you have. And it gives information there in the language type, any tags that have been associated with it, the date credits used and so on. So this is a really, really brief overview of what you could do using Code WP and a little bit of an understanding. You may think, why would I want to use this if I understand how to write code myself? Well, just for the fact that 
You could probably save yourself an exorbitant amount of time by using something like this and building up your own range of code snippets. However, if you want to access ones that people have created and have been verified, you can just simply use the public snippets option and that will then open up their library of code snippets that you can tap into and then use something like code snippets or any of those other kinds of tools to be able to simply drop that code into your website. Once you come over, you can see we can filter this. It's relatively small what you have here right now, but I can imagine this will grow. And you can see you can filter them based upon whether you are WooCommerce, you can search, you can sort the snippets by various different parameters. So for example, you may want this add to cart redirect code snippet for WooCommerce. You can open that up. You get information about the snippet itself. Again, the same type of information down the right-hand side. Then there's the snippet itself, and you can simply copy that, paste that over, and any explanations that might be underneath will tell you about it, and any FAQs. So this could be useful, even if you just have a free account, as, as this kind of platform grows and these code snippets expand, to get access to those could be quite useful, and then you could use those in whatever platform you wanted to tie those into your WordPress website. That's a really brief overview of Code WP. Have a look at it if you think this is something that's useful to you. But let me have your feedback, your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care.